food is used to train units and research technologies. You start the game with a few resource crates containing food, which your villagers can collect. This early food is used to train additional villagers from the town center. It is important to always keep training new villagers in order to improve your economy. Herds of huntable animals roam the map. They are a fast source of food, but hunting them may expose your villagers to danger. These herds will run away from hunters. Use this to your advantage. If the hunters attack the animals in the direction of your settlement, the herd will run closer to your town center, where you can gather from it safely, and newly trained settlers will not have to walk so far. Once you have trained enough villagers and have 800 food, advance to the commerce age at your town center. Advancing to new ages will unlock new units, buildings, and technologies. Before we explore what the commerce age has in store for us, let us see how well you can manage your early economy. Another way to obtain resources early in the game is to have your explorer collect various treasures found in the new world. Treasures usually yield resources, but may sometimes grant you a unit or bonus instead. Your explorer and your settlers are able to collect treasures. Small treasures can be found near your starting position, but you will need to venture outside of your town to find larger rewards. The explorer is excellent at scouting the map and providing you with information about the surrounding area. Most treasures are guarded and can only be collected once the guardians are defeated. The explorer, with his higher hit points, attack and special attack ability, is better than settlers at fighting guardians. Some guardians are too strong for even the explorer to fight early on. As you advance through the ages, your explorer becomes stronger and you can train military units to assist him in fighting guardians. You will have to judge which treasures are worth taking, weighing the rewards with the danger posed by the guardians. Your enemies will also try to collect all of the treasures. You should prioritize the treasures that will bolster your early economy. Let us see how well you can manage this. Your town is just that, a town. You are on a mission from your homeland. Therefore, your home city will supply you to help you complete your mission. Anything you do, constructing buildings, training units, and destroying enemy assets, generates experience that can be exchanged for this help. Once you have accumulated enough experience, you will earn a shipment. These shipments can be used to deliver units, ships, resource crates, building wagons, and even unit improvements. Normally, the shipped units are delivered to your town center, but other buildings, such as outposts or forts, can be set to receive shipments. Naval shipments arrive at a separate flag located on the Volta. A good way to generate experience is to have your explorer construct a trading post on a trade route. Whenever the trade caravan passes your trading post, you will receive a large amount of experience. In later ages, the trading post can also generate other resources. Do not forget to be active if you want to earn experience. Your home city will reward you not only for exploring the new world, but also for keeping others away from it. A well-maintained economy is required to advance your town through the ages. The more settlers you have, the stronger your economy. It is therefore important to keep training settlers throughout the game. A common strategy known as booming focuses on building a gigantic economy and largely ignoring military. The point of booming is to be able to afford large armies to crush your enemies later in the game. When booming, you may find that natural resources like huntable animals and coin mines quickly become scarce. You will also have to rely on economic buildings, such as mills. Settlers gather resources from these infinitely, but very slowly. In the later ages, you will be able to construct additional town centers. This will allow you to train more settlers and grow your economy faster. 
Advancing to later ages is expensive, so you will need many settlers if you want an advantage over your enemy. Certain strategies are more effective than others. A key component of a successful strategy is the build order. Much like a baker follows a recipe to produce hearty German pumpernickel, diligently following a build order will give you a strong economic foundation for your field tactics. A good build order guides your building construction and unit training, as well as the distribution of settlers. Build orders vary among civilizations based on their unique strengths and weaknesses. For this lesson, we will guide you through a build order to get your town off to a quick start. You will play as the French, a civilization that can use some powerful strategies in the mid-commerce age, owing to their special Creux de Bois unit. This type of settler is stronger and better at gathering resources than other settlers, but costs more. Use these special French settlers to quickly gather and advance. Just as there are strategies for growing your town's economy, there are also military strategies. First, we must focus on defense. Your enemies may attack you to attempt to cripple your economy. You must learn how to react and defend against such attacks. Your main method of defense is garrisoning your settlers inside any nearby town centers or outposts. This will allow your settlers to fire upon enemy soldiers. Your town center can also be used to call on Minutemen, soldiers whose high attack makes them an excellent choice for repulsing enemy attacks. Just know that Minutemen lose hit points over time, making them poor offensive units. Attacking a town and destroying buildings will take a lot of time for a player without siege equipment. If you have military buildings of your own, Take the enemy's slow advance as an opportunity to train some soldiers of your own. Alternatively, if you have earned a shipment, you can call up some troops from your own city. Let us see if you are up to the task of defending your town against invaders. Rushing. Attacking the enemy early is another common strategy. A small investment in military will pay off if you can cripple your enemy's economy and gain an advantage. War is economics by other means, after all. Cavalry and ranged units are best suited to rushing due to their mobility and range. Settlers and villagers require some effort to kill. It would be wise to move your units as close to them as possible and attack them before the enemy notices your presence. That way, you can maximize your damage even as they try to run. Dealing damage with melee attacks will cause fleeing enemies to be slowed for a few seconds. This is called snaring and makes it harder for the opponent to escape a dangerous situation, which in turn often guarantees kills for the snaring player. Beware of enemy defenses. The longer that your raiders stay alive, the more you will be able to harass and disrupt your enemy's economy. If you do not think that you can face the defenders, it is better to run and fight another day. Or seek out more undefended settlers. The choice of units for your army is very important. Units differ from one another in significant ways. Most importantly, certain unit types deal bonus damage against other unit types allowing them to act as a counter. A common example is the balance between heavy infantry, heavy cavalry, and ranged infantry. Heavy infantry counter cavalry. Ah! Cavalry counter ranged infantry. Ranged infantry counter heavy infantry, and so forth. Ah! A balanced army requires more than one unit type. By diversifying your army, you can make full use of each unit's strengths and eliminate their weaknesses through cooperation. Now it is time to see for yourself which units are best used against others. Perhaps you can one day even match the Duke of Wellington himself.
When foraying into new territory, mastering the sea can be as important as dominating the land. Oceans and lakes can hold sources of both food and coin, and be used to transport your troops behind enemy fortifications. To control the water, it is important to remember which ships you have at your disposal. Warships come in many sizes, from the small exploration vessels such as the Caravelle, to larger combat ships such as the Galleon, Frigate and Monitor. The larger a ship is, the better it will perform in battle. Some ships have the ability to launch a devastating broadside volley, while others can train new soldiers. Defensive buildings and artillery are able to combat ships very effectively. Make sure not to sail too close to this fort. Like Admiral Nelson at Trafalgar, mastering the waves will give you victory. Now, you must manage your ships and see how they fare in battle. Artillery is one of the most powerful weapons of this era. Cannons are mainly adept at demolishing large groups of infantry and buildings. However, they take time to reload and are very vulnerable to melee attacks. Artillery pieces must unlimber before they can fire. While in firing mode, their movement slows to a crawl. However, you can overcome this weakness by preparing them before a conflict. Once a battle is over, Task your cannons to limber again so that they can move around more easily. Like other units, each type of artillery plays a different role. The Falconet specializes in attacking infantry. The lighter Dolvery is used against other artillery. And the extremely heavy Mortar excels at demolishing buildings from a safety Mastering the use of artillery will let you dominate the battlefield as Napoleon did. Now. Let us see if you can support your allies with your newfound knowledge of cannons. <laughs>